last time on T-Rev. If BK is indeed Papa Rogers, would specific scenarios he discussed on an open forum be considered as like a confession or anything in that to that matter? Well, the reason Papa Roger always caught my eye and it was not only the specificity he gave that really lined up to things that nobody knew uh, pre-affidavit, right? It, it's it's really intriguing. Um, do I think Papa Roger is Brian Koberger? I'm still not sure. I think it's very possible. But if it is him, oh my gosh, this would be an amazing uh, piece of evidence for the prosecution because it really falls to tantalizing the public, um, putting what he did out there and asking questions about it, which would show his knowledge. And it would be very important piece of evidence to show the jury. He actually posted something about the knife sheath, right? He was like, no, the, I think the killer left the knife sheath at the scene. Or, And when I seen that, I was like, wow. Like, And people are saying, Rev, I was in this Facebook group and I seen Papa Rogers' name disappear in front of my eyes. And I was like, wow. what? They, they said it just completely disappeared and it vanished. So I was kind of blown away by that. So another question people ask, and I thought it was a good question too, is, the whole suspect vehicle number one in the PCA is, is there a vehicle two? Is there a vehicle three? Could you, you know, <laughs> tell people what that means or it, is it, you know, law enforcement lingo? Right. So as somebody who, uh, when you write a probable cause affidavit, uh, it's really up to you, the author as to how you want to refer to uh, suspect vehicle one, how you want to refer to the suspect, how you want to refer to suspect, telephone and all these things. Mm. I think that this individual, that was their writing style. I've seen it both ways. When there's a singular suspect, I've seen it as just suspect. In other words, when there's not more. But I've also seen people want to designate that one just so it looks, it sticks out a little bit. This is our vehicle. This is number one. This is the vehicle we're looking at. I really think it's a writing style. There's no other vehicle. Jenna, is it Coffin Doffer or Daffer? Correct me right it's, away. It's really Coffin Daffer. Okay. Uh, but it started out Doffer. People started calling me that, and it sort of <laughs> stuck. Let's bring in former FBI agent Jennifer Coffin Doffer. Uh, Jennifer Coffin Doffer joins me right now. Hey, Jennifer. I'm joined now by former FBI agent Jennifer Coffin Doffer. Jennifer, thank you as always. I want to bring in Jennifer Coffin Doffer next. She's a former FBI special agent with 28 years in federal law enforcement. But really, Cuomo was the one who started getting it right. So what out there could we verify as fact versus Fugazi? Let's bring back News Nation Jennifer Coffendaffer and retired FBI agent and News Nation Law and Justice contributor Jennifer Coffendaffer. It's great to see you both. Uh, let's bring in somebody who's done this many, many times and see if they share my feelings about it. Former FBI agent Jennifer Coffendaffer and former FBI agent News Nation Law and Justice contributor Jennifer Coffendaffer. And a lot of people just call me cough. So Whatever is easiest. <laughs> okay, I got you. So, Jennifer, I'm going to stick to Coffin Doffer. I think it rolls smooth. Hey, Jennifer Coffin Doffer, can you give some background on the strength of the defense case? Are they sticking to bad police work, or have you seen something they would bring to the table like a clue? So the defense is going to really hone in on this touch DNA. And um, people probably understand or may not understand that touch DNA is the skin cells and fluids possibly, for instance, if your fingers are sweaty, that you leave when you touch something. Mm -hmm. But typically there's friction involved, not always, but there has to be some sort of friction to some level or another. In this case, that button or that snap on that sheath, for yes. those in your audience that don't walk around carrying knives with sheaths, I walked around as a SWAT member with my knife, with my sheath. So. That snap is super tight. It's tight for safety reasons. The last thing you want is to be on an op moving around and mm -hmm. then it comes unsnapped. It becomes dislodged, meaning the knife, or you go in to reach for it and that sheath isn't down You cut yourself. So this isn't just a loose snap. This is going to be a very tight snap. So that's the reason why I believe his skin cells you know, came off as he unsnapped that. 
And wow. but the defense is going to say, I don't think they'll ever deny that it's not his DNA on there. Mm-hmm. I think what they're going to try to say is somebody touched Brian Koberger. Then when they undid the snap, Brian Koberger's DNA got on it mm-hmm. or that they stole or otherwise came in the possession of Brian Koberger's K-bar knife and sheath and purposefully left the sheath there. I think they're going to go with one of those two things. I think they'll also try to say, oh, the touch DNA, you know, it's a smaller amount of skin cells. I don't think that's going to get them anywhere from all the uh, information that I've read and seen and what the experts are saying that are DNA experts. They got to explain why it got there. The only logical reason is that he had snapped it before the crime, took out that knife, and it dropped out of his being stuffed between his pant and his belt, or he mm-hmm. put it in a cargo pant pocket and it fell. That's interesting because the, the K-bar knife and the sheet that always comes up and people always are refuting this DNA. Touch, is it touch? What kind of DNA is it? Some people are making it out to be touch. Some people aren't. I mean, it. can you clarify if it is touch DNA? Yeah, let me uh, explain that. So, and I got a lot of flack from some people because I said blood wasn't DNA, but blood isn't DNA. DNA is inside blood. DNA is inside hair. It's inside semen and it's Mm -hmm. inside saliva, right? Mm -hmm. Those products or those items contain DNA and our skin cells uh, contain DNA. And so do the sweat glands, you know, the sweat that comes out. So when you scrape against something or touch something with friction, those cells go on to what you touch potentially. Now you can imagine if it's a smooth surface, you know, like a wall or a car, it might, you might get fewer skin cells because there'd be less friction. Mm-hmm. But then you can imagine when you're unsnapping a sheath or, or using friction to open something, you're going to have more skin cells. So they're one in the same you know, touch DNA, trace DNA, all that. It just means the skin cells from your fingers. Got you. Rev Gang Strong, justice for the Idaho Four.